Guys, welcome to Concept Hunter. Today we're going to talk about A Kitty Dream, which is a lovely little game uh, from the Nitro Jam. It's a puzzle platformer that works very well, but has so many different things that it tries to do. It feels like a mishmash of concepts instead of a, a one coherent, strong point, and it falls into a lot of pitfalls that uh, some of them we've talked about before, some of them are kind of unique to this one and this style of game. So let's just instantly get started. I actually actually did something a little bit special. I have a couple of save points throughout the game by uh, on different browsers. So first of all, let's just get started. Press S to start. Again, the music as usual is, is, is gone, so you can only hear me, but uh, it's lovely. So arrow keys and S and D in order to move around. Arrow keys left and right, S jumps, and D doesn't do anything. D later on becomes a dash, and you actually tell me that press D in order to dash. So why are you telling me here, the D does something when it doesn't. There's no need for that. Now, S jumps. The up key doesn't do anything. I've talked about this a million times. The up key should jump. Done. Move on. Moving on. Um, there's no sense of direction here. It's kind of clear that I have to complete three big challenges in order to, and then come back here and finish the game. So it feels kind of like a, a Metroidvania type game where you explore around and you unlock different areas, and it is that, that exact type of game. But I have no sense of direction, and just a little bit, just something to put it in one direction to tell me to go right instead of left, because I went left, um, and there was nothing there, so I went right, because that, that's what I usually do. I go, always go left because right is the standard, and letting me know that you should go right would actually help in that case. Um, these are just little save points that could go along with the theme. Instead, they're just very obvious save points, but that's fine. It's a very minor little glitch. So far, I'm just moving around, jumping, there are no enemies whatsoever, but soon we will actually visit them um, as I make my way into the first power-up, which is actually double jump. And what I want to show you here, this is this actually happened to me, and uh, it, it, it adds on top of the, the, la the lack of direction in the game. These little things are actually enemies, and I thought they're enemies because it makes sense, but I wasn't sure. The problem here is that I didn't want to test it because you only go back to your save point, and that's so long, I have to actually go through so many screens in order to get back, that I just didn't want to risk it, and I didn't, I didn't touch them, and I just moved on. So now I have my double jump, and uh, the, clearly that unlocks more areas in the game that I could get to. And the first area that I actually unlock, that I want to show you, has a little, a little person in it. Now that person, I'm assuming, hides one of the secrets of the game. There are three, I found one in my casual playthrough, and uh, there, there's more, so that's a little bit of a nice thing. The problem is that he's tiny and I didn't know if he, he deals damage or not, but I thought it, he might not. So I went over and I discovered I can talk to him and he says, I'm hiding. What this made me do is actually go back to that screen that we previously saw and check if those tiny little things actually say things or they're actually enemies, because I haven't encountered them ever before. And I found out that they are enemies. But I, I didn't know, and I actually backtracked and checked, because it's not obvious that this dude you could talk to and those actually deal damage, especially as you never see them before. You don't have a, a, a time where you test that these are enemies and you can you know, fidget with it. You only encounter them at the end of, a, of, let's say, a challenge, and that's a little bit of a problem. So more, more tutorial would actually help there. Now, I don't want to go through, I don't want to have this as a let's play and going through the entire game, so I'm going to jump forward by switching my browser for Chrome, from Chrome to Firefox and actually reach the point where I get the dash. So I now have the will to dash. And the first thing I want to say, and this guy just tells me, you can dash with the D key. You can even smash down buttons. So this, this is the little bit of tutorial that should be in more places in the game, I feel. About the dash, it feels really good, but it makes most, most challenges in the game rather trivial in terms of traversing, because it's very, very strong and very powerful. And look at how, how long it is. The one thing that's annoying about it is that you can only do it in, in hor either horizontal or vertical. I can't do um, ver um, diagonal at all. And I really want to in a lot of cases, and I don't think there's any deterrent to, to allow the player to do that whatsoever. So so please, let me let me do it diagonally. It's just a lot more more comfortable. And these things are clearly things that do kill you. So, uh, and this is one of the secrets that you could, you need to make your way to. Uh, this is one of the obvious ones, the ones that I actually got. The other two I just didn't find, so good work there. I might go back and try and find them. Now, 
So far, I've gotten the two upgrades in the game, but I don't have any one of the, the big crystals that I actually have to get. So the way you get them is you just move more, more and more along, and you eventually reach this bed, and you get to it, and it kind of transports you into a different area. Now this different area, I, it, it's pretty cool that you have a, a specific different area. You explore the game and get power-ups, and then a specific area for these special power-ups. It's like a special challenge. And having this special place have uh, a concept of its own or a point to it is pretty strong. My problem is that out of the three crystals, this one has a point, the other two don't have points at all. They're just platforming, standard platforming. So yeah, I had an idea for one of them, but the others don't. It adds up on, uh, on top of the game just feeling kind of a mishmash of ideas. And let's just throw that and throw that and see how it works. And it doesn't feel like a coherent whole, and that's rather important when going through the entire game. So this part really f weirded me out. So far I've been a platformer. Now I'm a complete puzzle game. This is, this is an entire puzzle, okay? And um, it's actually quite a lot of fun. Clearly I've already finished it, so I've, I, I know exactly what I'm doing here. But you just gotta put all the things in, in the points and, and you move forward, okay? It makes sense, it's immediately obvious what to do, and it's fun, and it's good, and it's well made, all right? And in the second stage, actually, um, we'll have a little bit of an issue. I spent quite a lot of time on this one, and I couldn't think. I, I couldn't figure it out. I just could not figure out how to solve this level. And the problem is that solving this level isn't really solving the level. Or at least I, I really hope that I'm dumb, and that there's a way to solve this that's perfect. And I hope this is a bug, but this worked for me. I don't actually need to, to have it in there. I just needed to, to graze through. I really don't know if I'm being dumb, and I really hope that I'm being dumb, but this makes all of the, the, the following um, puzzles trivial, and, and if this is the way to solve it, then it's kind of, it kind of, it's not conveyed in any way. I tried to find a proper solution, and I prayed that there is one, but th again, but this is just, I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say. If, if I hope this isn't planned, that's all I can say. Um, if it is, then it, it really is just weird as hell. Um, this one as well. I want to jump to the last one and state my last problem with this game. The biggest thing about Metroidvania type games w is backtracking. Ask any aficionado of the genre, and I love the genre, it's backtracking. After you find a power, you need to go back to the place where the power unlocks a new path. And here, this is one of the crystals and I got it, and now I have to actually physically go back throughout the entire level to the to the bed and then go back. And that's really, really tedious for no reason. Why can't the bed just appear here and finish the game? And this happens every time. So, A Kitty Dream, it's an adorable little game. Uh, programming is done by Rayumi and the music is by Biltron209. I really enjoyed it, but you need to have a more cohesive experience instead of just uh, throw something here, something there, and, you know, fix all the tiny little problems like the up key, and you got a pretty, pretty great little thing here. Uh, and that's it. Thank you so much for watching Concept Hunter, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.